രണ്ടായിരത്തി പത്തൊമ്പത് അഥവാ കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ അസുഖം ഇന്ന് ലോകത്ത് ഒരു മഹാമാരിയായി പൊട്ടിപ്പുറപ്പെട്ടുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഈ ഒരു അസുഖത്തിലെ പ്രധാനമായിട്ടും എത്തുന്ന ഒരു അവസ്ഥ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് എ ആർ ഡി എസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നതാണ് ഏറ്റവും കോംപ്ലിക്കേറ്റഡ് അവസ്ഥയിലെത്തുന്നത് ഇതിൻ്റെ മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ട്രീറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഒരു വെൻറ്റിലേറ്റർ സപ്പോർട്ടോട് കൂടി ഒരു ഐ സി യു കെയർ ആണ് വെൻറ്റിലേറ്റർ മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് ഈ കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ പൊട്ടിപ്പുറപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഈ ഒരവസ്ഥയിൽ അതിൻ്റെ എ ആർ ഡി എസ് മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡിങ് വെൻറ്റിലേറ്റർ മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് പ്രോട്ടോകോൾ ആണ് ഈ വീഡിയോയിലൂടെ നമ്മൾ പറയുന്നത് Today we are discussing about ARDS ventilation. I am Dr. Deebu from General Hospital, Alapura. We are discussing ARDS ventilation at this time because ARDS uh, is an important strategy now as because the COVID-19 or coronavirus disease 19 is hitting a pandemic in all over the world including India and Kerala. So first we will discuss what is ARDS. The definition of ARDS is by the Berlin definition, four, parameters, four things are needed, that is, it is acute onset, meaning that onset is over one week, onset is over one week or less, and bilateral opacities consistent with pulmonary edema must be present and may be dictated on CT or chest radiograph. Then, PaO2 FiO2 ratio less than 30 mm of mercury with a minimum of 5 cm water peep or continuous positive airway pressure. and must not be fully explained by cardiac failure or fluid overload by a clinic uh, the fourth parameter is by a clinical decision it may be supported by an investigation like echo which is uh, or actually echo is not mandatory but if the clinician feels so it may need an echo classification of ARDS ARDS is uh, classified into mild moderate and severe according to the PaO2 by FaO2 ratio. Mild is PaO2 FaO2 ratio between 200 and 300. Moderate is with the ratio between 100 to 200 and severe is the ratio less than 100. Then before going into the actual uh, protocol, we just discuss some of the parameters in a ventilator. First is FaO2. FaO2 is the fraction of inspired oxygen. Its normal value is 0.21. It's the minimal value that is a fraction of oxygen in the atmospheric air is 21 percentage. It, in a ventilator, we can set up a value between 0.21 to 1. The minimum value is 0.21. Then tidal volume is the volume delivered to the patient. We will discuss about calculating the normal tidal volume in a patient or ARDS later. Then PEEP is the peak and expiratory pressure. It is the pressure which is applied in the expression to prevent the alveoli from collapse or atelectasis. So, minimum value usually set is 5 cm of water. Then, about another thing is trigger sensitivity. Trigger, it is the criteria used by the ventilator to determine the patient's effort of respiration. There are two types, one is the flow trigger and pressure trigger. In flow trigger, the change in the baseline flow is needed to determine the patient's effort. In pressure trigger, the change in the baseline pressure is dictated. These two types are used by ventilator. Then we shall go th briefly through the modes of ventilator. So the commonly used ventilator modes are the assist control ventilation which includes assist control ventilation uh, volume, volume assist control or pressure assist control. So in this um, graph we will see that the volume uh, assist control when comparing with the control ventilation or CMB, control mandatory ventilation, all the breaths are given as mandatory in a pre-specified time uh, that is pre-specified rate to a pre-specified tidal volume. While in assist control ventilation it will allow the patient to initiate a breath and his effort or trigger is dictated by the ventilator and it is given as a breath. If the patient is not having a breath effort for a fixed time, then it will uh, give a breath, uh, give the ventilation in a pre-specified rate. Then in the, assist, the volume assist control, we can see that with this patient effort, the fall in pressure, it is dictated and it is given a, a tidal volume. This here the tidal volume is fixed because it is a volume control ventilation and the high pressure, the peak pressure or the peak plateau pressure will vary. It is the pressure which is given to deliver the tidal volume. In the volume assist control, in the pressure assist control method, what the difference is that the ventilator will detect the similar but the thing is that here it is the peak pressure or the set pressure it is a uh, constant that it is a set level, high level will be, pressure control level will be given 
and the volume will differ that is a tidal volume will differ according to the patient's lung condition then pressure support ventilation it is a support mode which provides a pressure support to overcome the increased work of breathing so it imposed by the disease process the endotracheal tube the respiratory valves and other mechanical aspects of the ventilatory supports these also cause resistance which is also overcome by the pressure support given in pressure support it allows for the titration of patient effort during weaning some ventilator we can get as the percentage of effort that is it is 25 percentage by the patient rest 25 by the ventilator like that or we can give us the Uh, centimeter of water pressure which is a support given it is helpful in assessing the extubation readiness in this graph we can see that what marked in the rows or near red color it is the ventilator effort which is given in the uh, black it is the patient support is given then one few words about arterial bed gas analysis arterial bed gas analysis assessment is needed daily and in between hours when there is a change in patient's condition or when we are changing the ventilator parameters so arterial bed gas it is usually taken from the radial artery and we are sending and these are the four parameters which are these are the parameters which we are usually concerned that it one is the partial pressure of oxygen that is pvo2 normal value is 80 to 100 mm of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide pca2 normal value is 35 to 45 mm of mercury oxygen content or fao2 21 percentage is the minimal this value we are entering method like that if the patient is kept on a ventilator with an fao2 of 100 we have to write in that list about this 100 then the abg machine is cannot detect the uh, fao2 that is the partial pressure of oxygen we are giving that varies from 21 to 100 according to what we kept then next is oxygen saturation or sao2 that we will get normal value is 94 to 100 percentage bicarbonate level it is 22 to 26 millicoulombs per liter it is a normal value normal ph is 7.35 to 7.45 any value less than 7.35 is acidosis and any value more than 7.45 is alkalosis so in uh, there are two types of acidosis and alkalosis one is the respiratory acidosis is a condition in which the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is rising that is pacio2 is rise in respiratory alkalosis the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is decrease that is less than 35 when metabolic acidosis the bicarbonate level is decreased and in metabolic acidosis the bicarbonate level is increased then one few points about the sedative use of sedatives and neuromuscular blockers in the icu setup or setting up a ventilation one uh, the most common used sedatives in a ARDS patient is mida injection midazolam and injection lorazepam both are given as infusion injection midazolam is available as 1 mg per ml solution usual loading dose is 0.03 to 0.3 mg per kg followed by maintenance dose of 0.03 to 0.2 mg per kg per hour then lorazepam infusion it is given as a loading dose of 0.02 to 0.04 mg per kg loading dose followed by followed by 0.01 to 0.1 mg per kg per hour continuous iv infusion then the dexmedetomidin it's a drug which has a least respiratory depression it is available in 100 microgram per ml and the load usual loading dose is 1 microgram per kg iv over 10 minutes followed by maintenance dose of 0.2 to 0.7 microgram per kilogram per hour continuous infusion then if the patient cannot be managed or there is continuous asynchrony or dyssynchrony which is going on even after sedation then our patient is fighting with the ventilator then other option or the final step is giving patient a muscle relaxant the usual muscle relaxant available in our hospital is the vecronium which can be given as 5 to 8 mg iv bolus either 5 we give 5 mg iv bolus it is followed by 1 mg top up every 30 to 60 minutes according to the patient status then uh, in uh, most of the ards trials the drug used is a cis attracure then make, then we are moving to the make frank mechanical ventilation in ards 
the basic concept of mechanical ventilation in ARDS is preventing ventilator induced lung injury while maintaining adequate oxygenation. So two things are important in that, that is a low tidal volume and low pressures. Low tidal volume ventilation means low tidal volume to reduce the damaging excessive stretch of lung tissue and alveoli. The classical trial is the ARDS network trial and other meta-analysis shows that there is improved survival with low tidal volume in ARDS. Lung injury caused by ventilation cause cytokine release and this cytokine cause multi-organ failure. Then this picture will show a condition in which the it's a rat, uh, it's lung which is exposed to a higher ventilation which is taken from a Malkotra studies. First we will see a normal lung and after 5 minutes of ventilation we can see that the lung is high, like hyperinflated type lung and after 20 minutes of lung we see that there is hemorrhagic and the lung is very, becoming uh, very tr troubled. Then. Coming to the low pressures, low pressures, our aim is the, to set a low plateau pressure. Plateau pressure is the pressure which is, measured in, which is measured in the volume control by applying an inspiratory hold. So during that plateau pressure, the flow sees and what we measure is the pressure at the alveoli are measured. So our aim is to keep the plateau pressure less than 30 cm of water. Then, in the picture we will see that is the graph is showing that pressure the topmost is a peak inspiratory pressure and we can see that there is a plateau for that is a peak plateau pressure the difference between the peak inspiratory pressure and peak plateau pressure increases when there is resistance to flow like an obstructive airway disease copd asthma or when the tube is blocked then if in conditions like ARDS when the lung compliance is decreased the P plateau will increase and the driving pressure will increase that is the difference between the P plateau and P. So aim is to keep the driving pressure to less than 15 centimeter of water. Next is we will move on to P peak or peak end in expiratory pressure the advantage is that it uh, increases the oxygenation increases mean airway pressure and prevents and treat atelectasis and de-recruitment. The problem is that higher PEEP can cause over distension, barotrauma and hemodynamic compromise. We can see from the picture that the optimal view need and optimal PEEP is needed. Even lower can cause atelectasis and higher can cause over distension, barotrauma, hemodynamic compromise. Then a point on minute ventilation. Minute ventilation, it is the uh, ratio of tidal volume and respiratory rate. The normal value is 100 ml per kg of ideal body weight. And now the correct ARDS protocol. So when we decided that a patient is getting ventilated and we are moving, we are now discussing about that ventilator settings. So after intubation, initiate the ventilation. Uh, first we will usually intubate in a uh, assist control ventilation usually volume assist control so keep an initial tidal volume of 8 ml per kg of predicted body weight the formula for calculating that predicted body weight is given below that is 2.3 into height in inches minus 60 plus 45.5 in a female and 2.3 into height in inches minus 60 plus 50 in a male set a respiratory rate at 35 breaths per minute to deliver the minute ventilation of 7 to 9 liters per minute so peep is kept at least 5 cm of water. Then FAO2 is given set at a value to maintain a PAO2 range of 55 to 80 mm of mercury or a saturation of 88 to 95 percentage. Titrate FAO2 below 70 percentage when feasible to prevent an oxygen induced lung injury. Then over a period of less than 4 hours, reduce the tidal volume to 7 ml per kg and then gradually to 6 ml per kg. Now the primary goal of the ARDS ventilation is to keep the plateau pressure. We have said it is the pressure which is measured during that inspiratory hold of 0.5 second in a control volume ventilation to less than 30 cm water and as low as possible. Then high plateau pressure can cause harmful alveolar distension, ventilator associated lung injury and volume trauma. If plateau pressure is elevated, 
reduce the tidal volume it can be reduced as loss 4 ml per kg of ideal body weight then sedate the patient and reduce ventilator patient dyssynchrony if the last resort we have said that neuromuscular blockage which eliminates all patient support muscle tone and dyssynchrony so when we are giving sedation on neuromuscular blockage make sure that the patient is in a control mode that is the patient is not in an assist mode that is we have said for two types that is volume assist control and pressure assist control then this is a simplified peep table to adjust the FAO2 and peep to keep the oxygenation that is the SPO2, or, uh, SPO2 PYO2 and the uh, minute ventilation in an adequate setting that the for oxygenation to be maintained follow this role that is FAO2 when 0.3 keep peep at 8 and FAO3 increase to 0.4 and then peep is increased to 10 like this table 0 0.5, 12, 0 0.6, 14, 0 0.7, 16, 0 0.8, 18, 0 0.9, 20 and 100 percentage or a favor to 1 with a peep of 22. Like this, keep according to this table, increase the favor to and peep to maintain the adequate oxygenation. Then one important point is permissive hypercapnia in ARDS. So we have discussed that focus of ARDS ventilation is to prevent a ventilator induced or a, our ventilation induced lung injury. So it is focus is to reducing the plateau pressure. So we have to reduce the tidal volume as far as possible. So this low tidal volume can cause hypo hypoventilation. This hypoventilation leads to increase in PCO2 and respiratory acidosis. So our aim is to allow some hypercapnia to keep the uh, low tidal volume so that the plateau pressure is kept as low as possible. So how permissive we can give the hypercapnia that is till the absolute value of CO2 is not much important but the important is the value of pH. The, it is can usually go down up to 7.25 or a 7.2 pH. So the permissive hypercapnia is harmful in cerebral edema, cerebral mass, seizure disorder, active coronary artery disease, arrhythmias, pulmonary hypertension, right ventricle dysfunction or strain, hypovolemia and GI bleeding. Resolve this strategy when increasing respiratory rate is not sufficient to keep the adequate oxygenation and minute ventilation. Then the you know, most important of the thing in ARDS ventilation is prone position. In the first and second picture we see that a patient is kept in first in supine and then it is prone. When patient is kept in supine position, his the we see that the posterior thorax is having more areas and this more area is exposed to the weight of the body. So the basal atelectasis will be more and the, the weight of the heart is also followed on the lungs and also the intra-abdominal pressure is compressing the diaphragm upwards. So when a patient is kept in prone position, these uh, parameters will change. The patient is exposed to this uh, lower area of the anterior thorax is exposed to the body weight and the heart weight is off from the lung. So it causes the shift weight from back to front, takes away the weight of the heart, improves the ventilation perfusion matching that is pulmonary mechanics are improved, keep alveoli open and evenly distribution of gas. Prone position is recommended by the PROSEVA trial in 2030 which demonstrated a dramatic near 50% relative risk reduction and 17% absolute risk reduction in mortality. Patients are kept at 14 for 6 hours a day that is in an interval of 4 hours the patient is kept for prone after that 4 hours he is kept to soup pain and which the nursing care and other um, things are done. Then meta-analysis of 6 RCT also showed the mortality benefit with prone positioning. Then another thing is use of recruitment maneuver that is application of incremental high peep in a rapid sequence. So in this picture we see that in the normal alveoli and it can get atelectasis or fluid field. So by giving a recruitment maneuver we can make this atelectasic alveoli are recruited to normal and they are recruited to participate in oxygenation. So it is application of higher PEEP in a rapid sequence that is suppose the patient is exposed to a PEEP of 10 we will increase the PEEP in a rapid sequence either 2 or 3 centimeter of water that is if it is 10 then we increase it into 12 or 13 and, keep and wait for some 5 breaths. If the patient is hemodynamically stable and oxygenation is stable, then again increase it into 3 by into, um, 3 or incrementals into 13, then 16, then 18, 20, 23, 25 like that. Usually we will go up to 20 or 25 because 
uh, in one study which used a peep of incremental peep of up to 60 uh, showed a motor increased mortality with recruitment maneuver so usually we'll go around some 25 uh, centimeter of water and in after some few seconds we will come back to the normal peep then the over distension the problem with the recruitment maneuver and all is can cause over distension of alveoli in non eclectic areas which will compress the perfusion so it can cause ventilation perfusion mismatch by over distension in the non eclectic areas then another one of the method of improving ventilation perfusion mismatch is inhale pulmonary vascularities like iloprost or troposteal the in the picture we see that the first that red mark is uh, alveoli is not part in gas exchange but with the alveoli which is participating in gas exchange only in that alveoli we will reach the inhale pulmonary vasodilator which will cause the vasodilators so in the alveoli with air with uh, with air or oxygen is getting is getting more perfusion so improved ventilation perfusion mismatching but the studies does not show any mortality benefit with the use of inhale pulmonary vasodilators then uh, other thing or other possible ways uh, is what we said is a ECMO and is the role of ECMO in a case of ARDS is not at proof but there are some cases of successful use of this ECMO in the last H1N1 pandemic so currently the veno venous ECMO which may be tried but uh, we won't have a definitive study or a definitive guideline to recommend it it may be individualized according to the treating physician's discretion then what are the things we monitor daily so in a patient on ventilator we have to monitor the saturation spo2 abg in which we have to monitor the parameters mentioned earlier then the daily bp and it is the vasopressor need whether it should be up titrated or lower titrated the ventilator tubings and connection it should be fit properly then look at the humidifier and filter then look for the or alarm settings no none of the alarm should not be off most of the ventilator will get alarms for the minute ventilation when there is a higher peak uh, peak pressure is higher when the respiratory rate is lower like that and fluid balance and the fluid balance the patient should not be uh, overfed it should be fed at a minimal level only then ECG monitoring should be taken daily then mode changing and support that is the pressure or the support which is needed by the patient can be re can be reduced after assessing the patient and if the patient is taking uh, all and breaths then he can and we are sure that the we set a rate of example we set a respiratory rate in a control mode of 15 and a patient only muscles control 15 and patient is taking some 18 or 20 we means that we can keep the patient we can and the other parameters ABG vitals everything are stable we can transfer the patient to a support ventilation like pressure support then a trial of weaning can be tried so weaning weaning is the method of uh, taking patients taking off from the ventilator it can be considered when the patient is not having any respiratory distress saturation is uh, less not not less than 90 high no hypercapnia and pH is no acidosis that is pH is not less than 7.3 so he has no hemodynamic instability and he does not need a high dose vasopressor. There is no suspected, suspected myocardial infection, my infection and there is no depressed mental status. And his respiratory rate is normal that is not less than 10, PP is uh, not more than 10 and FAO2 requirement is not more than 0.5. Then the most important part in the weaning trial is the two minute breathing assessment or to find out the rapid shallow breathing index that is when the patient is on a support mode ventilation keep the pressure support and the peep set the peep and the pressure support to zero so keep the patient in that support for two minutes at the end of two minutes divide the respiratory rate by tidal volume in liters example if the patient is uh, having a respiratory rate of 20 and he is on a tidal wind volume of say 500 ml that is it comes as 0.5 liter so 200 divided by 0.5 it will be 40 so any value of rapid shallow breathing index less than 105 is considered for considered as a successful screening test for weaning then next is a spontaneous breathing trial so there are various methods of spontaneous breathing trial the most classical one you see is a tp trial that is remove patient from the ventilator and connect tps to the endotracheal tube with oxygen supply 
then other is to set the peep and pressure support to zero like what we have said in the rapid shallow breathing index estimation then in the pressure support mode a lower pressure support to overcome the pressure of the ET tube and other uh, obstructive airway if present then automatic tube compression can be detected in certain ventilator and they give a minimal pressure support to overcome the compression then CPAP to get a minimal level of end expiratory lung volume so to the important of this ARDS in this COVID situation is that this use of this TP is cause an increased exposure of the ICU caregivers to the COVID so TP uh, mode is not recommended so one of the best thing to be considered is to set the pressure and the PEEP at zero or pressure support these two are the recommended then timing the minimal of uh, the timing for the spontaneous retrieval minimum is 30 minutes if needed one hour is good the maximum time is 120 if the patient is okay with a one hour of the spontaneous breathing trial okay then we can try for extubation then the failing of a spontaneous breathing trial occur if there is a respiratory rate greater than 35 breaths per minute or increase in respiratory rate greater than 20 percentage from the baseline with respiratory distress saturation less than 90 percentage heart rate more than 140 per minute or increase in heart rate more than 20 percentage from baseline with respiratory distress then high or lower pp that is BP more than 180 or less than 90 millimeter of mercury. Then mental disturbances. That is patient has somnolence, agitation, diaphoresis or anxiety. Increase in vasopressor or ionoscrop support needed or complaints of chest pain or any other significant illness. So coming to the extubation criteria. Extubation criteria first the patient has to successfully pass the spontaneous breathing trial. After that, the SpO2 should be more than 90% or at a baseline in patients with chronic pulmonary disease. Then he should have a he or she should have a strong cuff to clear the secretions, not requiring frequent suction. That is, frequent suction means the suction is needed more than once in two hours. And hemodynamically stable, that either he is off vasopressors or minimal support, and patient should have a good level of consciousness. Extubation. Uh, we have to keep all the necessary things all caregivers should be in a PPA and start oxygenation via nasal prongs before the starting of the procedure of extubation so keep 82 of different sizes laryngoscope boogie ambu bag suction catheter everything is ready and other drugs for induction should be also be ready then keep patient in upright suction endotracheal tube and oral cavity Remove the endotracheal tube attachments. Ask the patient to take deep breath and exhale. Deflate cuff and look for air leak. If there is no air leak, suspect laryngeal edema. Uh, Excavation is risky. We have to look for other detailed examination for the laryngeal edema. Then row. Then with the patient taking deep in inspiration followed by expiration time, slowly remove the tube. And immediately after removing the tube, wear the patient a surgical mask. This is an important step and after that only ask the patient to cough out all secretions. This keeping the oxygenation prongs before the procedure and wearing a proper surgical mask, wearing patient with a proper surgical mask are important in this kind condition of COVID. Then successful in extubation means no re-intubation within 48 hours and some consider there is no re-intubation up to 5 to 7 days or uh, trace of extubation so reintubation means a worse outcome so it's the successful then few words regarding one is nebulization nebulization can be given in a patient on ventilator using the imbued nebulizer or air on which does not cause much uh, exposure to outside or caregivers then other is the suctioning and sampling the cross section is recommended this is the picture of a cross section tube so open section will generate uh, unnecessary aerosol exposure to the caregivers and increases the risk of COVID con transmission. So closed section and sampling is recommended. Then, then we have seen in many videos and many recommendations in WhatsApp and all about the multiple patients connected to a single ventilator in a COVID pandemic. But there is a uh, 
this issue has been uh, raised by the various societies like the Society of Critical Care Medicine, American Association of Respiratory Care, American Society of Anesthetologists, Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation and the American Association of Critical Care Nurses and the AC, that is the American College of Chest Physician. They are recommended against the use of a single ventilator to multiple patients because these patients will detect these patients trigger everything from the single patient. So if there is multiple patients are connected, so the ventilator, the, it, it will not dictate properly and can cause ventilator malfunction. Also, there is an increased risk of transmission of infection. This presentation and video is not all of you. That is the case of 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 the നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടിൽ ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ അവസ്ഥയിൽ നിന്ന് മാറി വളരെയധികം ആളുകൾ വെൻറ്റിലേറ്ററിലോട്ട് എത്തുന്ന ഒരു അവസ്ഥ എത്തിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അവരെ എങ്ങനെ ചികിത്സിക്കണമെന്നും അവരെ വെൻറ്റിലേറ്ററിൽ എങ്ങനെ മാനേജ് ചെയ്യണമെന്നും ഉള്ളതിനെ പറ്റി ഒരു ബേസിക് ഐഡിയ കിട്ടിക്കാണും എന്ന് വിചാരിക്കുന്നു എന്ത് തന്നെയാണെങ്കിലും അങ്ങനെ ഒരു അവസ്ഥ എത്താതിരിക്കട്ടെ നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം